Russia has been expecting some sort of offensive from Ukraine, and we've been seeing a lot of images like this. Satellite images of the Russians creating an anti-tank ditch, devil's teeth, a primary defensive trench, and these are popping up all over uh, Ukraine. So, Ukraine is going to have to figure out how are we going to breach these obstacles, do we need to breach these obstacles, and can we breach these obstacles? So in this video, we are going to talk about how combat engineers are going to have to breach this objective, and how combat engineers are going to have to defend this objective. My name is T-Sply, let's get into this video. Now what's cool about this image is that we have the exact coordinates. So let's go over to Google Earth and see why the Russians chose this position. Like what makes this position so defendable and so good? Okay, so here's the exact coordinate, and let's see why Russian combat engineers or Russian sappers chose this location. And the biggest thing I can see is that this is the path of least resistance. And in the engineer world, the path of least resistance is where you always want to breach or where you always want to bring people to. So let me explain that. Number one, you have a body of water over here. Number two, you have tree lines, you have towns, and the biggest open path of least resistance where Russian combat engineers predict Ukrainian combat engineers will go is right through here. Now, what's really important is you need to understand, you need to know what direction Ukraine would be coming from. And this is quite simple. If you just zoom out all the way, Russia's over here, Ukraine's over here. So it's not that hard to figure out which way the Ukrainians will be coming from. So I went ahead and actually enhanced the satellite image and we're going to go over um, the combat operations that need to be performed to go through the path of least resistance and to obtain these breaches. So one thing that the satellite image did not show is that there is a river here. So we have a river, anti-tank ditch, devil's teeth, and then we have the primary defensive trench. Okay, so here is the fundamentals of the anti-tank ditch, and this will be the first obstacle combat engineers will have to face. It's a very simple concept. You wanna be as far away as you can to where the tanks cannot reach you. But then when they come upon the anti-tank ditch down here, once they face upwards and can't engage you, that's when you can attack them. Then we get to the devil's tooth. Now, again, many people say this is a complete waste of time. This, again, is just more of a hassle and more of a marking in a way to attack tracked vehicles. And you definitely can't just drive right through these things. You definitely have to create some sort of breach or some sort of lanes to where you can get vehicles passing through the devil's tooth. Okay, now from here, I want to set up a battle space and sort of what the doctrine is from both sides and what probably will happen. So first things first, we know artillery is going to be used. We know there's going to be a tank element and we know that the Russians will have men in their primary defense trench. Now, what I think many people predict is that all of these Abrams tanks that are coming into the hands of the Ukrainians, that is going to be the primary way this offensive is going to happen. We bring in these Abrams tanks, it's going to take out everyone. But in a situation like this, an Abrams tank is not necessarily ideal for getting the job done. This is what I think is going to happen, considering we're looking at all of the training that's going on. Um, there's a lot of Americans in Europe doing combat operations uh, training with the Ukrainians. Here's what I think is going to happen. I truly believe we are going to see more of the use of these Bradley fighting vehicles, mostly because you can fit people in the back of Bradley fighting vehicles, combat engineers, or infantry. And not only that, you can get a tow element on top of the Bradley fighting vehicle, which makes it light enough to move fast and strong enough to take out artillery pieces and take out other Russian tanks. So first things first, no matter what, the anti-tank ditch is going to be a massive hassle. However, there is equipment out there that we could assume that the Ukrainians could use to maybe try to make things a little more manageable and a little more easy. Okay, so here is the assault breacher vehicle, and this vehicle was quite literally made to do this job. This is its bread and butter, and what's really unique about this vehicle is, first off, yes, it looks like an Abrams tank because it's on an Abrams tank chassis, but we also have this plow made by the British right here in the front. So not only do we have massive firepower in the back with these mine-clearing line charges, we'll get into that in a minute, but you also have this plow element. What I think really needs to happen to make operations like this smooth is that you need to somehow get this plow in here and level things off so that other tracked vehicles can go ahead and get through these anti-tank ditches. 
So let's go ahead and assume that our assault breacher vehicle has managed to create some sort of funnel or portal somewhere where the rest of our tracked vehicles can get through. Now this is very vital because once they do this, you already need to know in advance what you're going to do because you need to understand we get our first Bradley through here, we get our second Bradley through here, you need to continue the momentum. Are you gonna leave artillery pieces behind? Are you gonna leave Abrams tanks behind? Because understand, when you scroll down here, the firepower is not stopping. We still have artillery and we still have Russian armor, Russian troops who are going to be engaging Ukrainian troops. Something else we can assume is that the mission for the assault breacher vehicle could technically be done. Uh, one thing we do need to consider is that you have what's called these mine clearing line charges. And pretty much on the back of these things, you have a rocket that shoots out. It creates this long sock tube thing. And these things are heavy. I've had to repack one of these before. And then they create these lanes. They, they blow up in place. These two lines that pretty much create a way for you to drive on through. Now for if whatever reason we can't do this and they decide let's not move um, our assault breacher vehicle forward anymore, well, let's use our Bradleys. We want to use speed. You can also do that and this will be the job of the combat engineer. Because again, in the back of a Bradley, you can hold a squad of combat engineers and they can perform their engineer tasks. However, they have to blow up a lane to get vehicles to go through, they can do it. But again, even more important is that you have this defensive element of Bradley fighting vehicles. The modern updated Bradley fighting vehicles, they are rather powerful and they can really defend you well if need be. And again, this is all basic military doctrine from the sapper's perspective and combat engineer's perspective. Every military has been doing this um, whether it's foreign or domestic. I was a combat engineer, so I'm just going based off of my training as well. So let's go in and say these combat engineers managed to create a lane and a breach. And I know what a lot of you guys are saying. You're like, man, at this point, men must be down. Equipment must be taken out. Yeah, that is the job of a combat engineer. It has one of the lowest life expectancies, especially when performing a task like this. Now from here, the combat engineer can essentially get back in his Bradley fighting vehicle. If everything's going okay, we could have medics coming upon scenes because you have to understand, these positions right here should all be secured and the Russians are probably not worrying about what's going on back here. They are worrying about what's going on coming towards them. So let's go ahead and move on to our next phase. Okay, combat engineers roll up. Now we go ahead, get our Bradley fighting vehicles going, get them going. Something else to remember, you always have to keep some sort of element to secure the breach. You always want to make sure this is good to go. You never want to lose control of the breach. You want to have organization. You want to have medics on standby. You always need to control the breach. From here, we can make an assumption that the battle is going in favor for Ukrainians if they are performing this breaching operation. Whether or not they want to bring the assault breach vehicle and do some sort of torment down here, whether or not this is when you push your heavy elements all the way through, and try to spear through Russian defenses, that is all dependent on the situation and what's going on. But the main thing you need to understand is that you need to create a breach because remember we analyzed to the left and right of the path of least resistance, you sort of have to go through here. Otherwise the Russians wouldn't mind putting up a fight against you in a tree line, putting up a fight against you in a village again. That would be very difficult for the Ukrainians to have push through these villages, push through these tree lines. It wouldn't work too much in the favor of the Ukrainians. Now, again, this is very hypothetical situation, but this is also a very real situation that can happen from the sappers perspective on both sides. Um, Russian sappers could expect that they will be defending uh, this area. And again, these areas will be marked with artillery. There will probably be landmines. There's probably going to be barbed wire. And it's going to be up to the combat engineers uh, from the Ukrainian side to use the training that they're getting from Americans. You Use the equipment that they're getting and make sure that the commanders know exactly what they need to do. You need to make sure you secure the breach. You need to make sure you push onto the breach. You have to use momentum in your favor. Now, again, this is the way that I see Bradley fighting vehicles are mostly going to be utilized in the perspective of the combat engineer and Ukraine, mostly because, again, yes, the Bradley fighting vehicle is a fighting vehicle, but it's also a great transport vehicle because it could really defend the Ukrainian troops. And that's what they need when you are performing combat operations in this high intense scenario. And I will tell you, I was a demolition team leader and you everything is relying on the man at the end of the day yes you could try to take all this out with artillery maybe use some drones to do some sort of damage but the single demolition leader combat engineer whether that's also the assault breacher vehicle you have to get these breaches through i could not um like 
put that in your head enough. This is so important to make sure you secure these breaches and create these funnels because path of least resistance, these are going to be used. Once this battle is over, these are going to be used as cleared lanes, which means there's no more landmines. We can run up through here and we know we have secured the area. So let's keep using this lane. So this is a very basic breakdown in how militaries perform breaching operations. Again, every military ever does it this way. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you've ever seen this before. And maybe we can go more in depth on what you could or couldn't expect through an operation like this.